Good morning, everyone. Can we just take this time to greet one another with a good morning? Good day as well to everyone who's joining us in our live stream. Today, we're going to continue with our series on the Good Moves Build-Up. Over the past few weeks, we have discussed where and how we came across our idea of the Good Moves, where we began with a concept called Tov. Tov, which is the original design of God, which we can find from Genesis 1. From the first week, we talked about what the cruciform life was like and how we are supposed to learn how to live as living sacrifices. The week after that, we talked about the mission of God, what it feels like to live like that, how we, we're supposed to see it in action. We saw that through the life of David and Goliath. Now, the previous week, we talked about the relationships and how important they are when it comes to our life and how God, in His understanding, and Paul, in the way that he explained it, wants us to become bodies, members of one body, which he calls the body of Christ. Today, we're going to expound a little bit more as we go through Romans 12. Kasi yun po, sinimula po natin siya nung October 1. We're continuing it as we go through the whole of Romans 12. And we're going to talk about what is God wanting for us to do when it comes to living like a Christian. So, if you have your Bibles, please open them with me to Romans chapter 12. In Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to 13, we have here what Paul calls the marks of the true Christian. Okay? So sometimes, ang problem po natin, when we think about what it is to live in faith, we always think in terms of our mind. Lagi siya belief-oriented, no? Now we think that it's a personal relationship between us and God, which is correct. May personal relationship naman talaga tayong pinag-uusapan. But at the same time, one of the pitfalls that we have when we talk about a personal relationship is that our relationship with God exists in the mind. Now, we're going to talk a lot about relationship kasi yan ang isa sa mga mahirap na konsepto pag-usapan. Now, we live in a time where one of the most common things we say is, I love you. Diba? I love you. It's a very, very common refrain. Yet, when we think about the words, I love you, we're not really thinking about what it entails. Ano bang dala ng salitang I love you? Diba? Madali sabihin, mahirap panindigan. Agree ba kayo? Yan yung mga nag-agree, may hugot. Diba? But, we're going to talk about it deeper because in verse 9, sabi po, Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Now, when we think and look at what's behind Romans, 9, uh, Romans 12, verse 9 to 13, we see that everything here that's talked about is something deeply practical. Na lahat ng bagay na to, when we look at what it is, hindi yung tipong yung tao tayo na nakalutang galing sa sahig. Minsan yun yung pakiramdam, no? yung parang hindi na tayo umaapak sa lupa. But when we look at how Paul describes what life is like, it's deeply connected to the ground. Let love be genuine, love one another, Outdo one another, yung meron pang concept po palagi ng relationship. There's something deeply important here. What is it about relationships that we're supposed to pick up, what we're supposed to focus on? There's a book that was written by a pastor named John Mark Comer, and the book is called Loveology. Loveology, God, love, marriage, sex, and the never-ending story of male and female. Dito po, yung pastor, pinag-usapan niya where we're supposed to understand where love comes from and how we're supposed to live with it. And sabi niya, to understand where love comes from, we must talk about the story before the story. Sabi, niya, sabi po niya, the story of the Bible begins and ends with a wedding. In Genesis, we read about the first wedding of all time, Adam and Eve. And Revelation ends with the wedding of heaven and earth. Now, in fact, God officiates the first wedding and He speaks over Adam and Eve and says, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife. 
and they become one flesh. Now, sabi niya, maybe you're thinking, wait, what is why? Diba? Sabi, that is why. Parang sinabi, that is why nag- we get into relationships. Eh, pero parang pag tinignan natin, yun walang background. What is why a man leaves his father and mother? To answer that question, we have to rewind to the story before the story. Now, Genesis 1, sabi niya, when we look at it, it tells the story of creation from 30,000 feet. God speaks and the worlds are born. God shapes the land and the sea, fills the sky with birds, floods the sea with fish, populates the land with living creatures. And at the apex, the climactic moment in the narrative, He creates human to take care of His virgin world. So, alam po natin yan. We hear a lot about the origin story of the Bible, how we were, were made in day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, and on day seven, God rested. Now, pag tinignan natin yun, everything that God created was good. And yet, in Genesis 2, meron tayong parang biglang telescopic view. If dati, malayo, bigla ngayon, in Genesis 2, we have a closer look at what God is trying to accomplish. Genesis 2 zooms in on a garden called Eden and the first human called Adam. The Lord God formed a man, which is Adam in Hebrew, from the dust of the ground and breathed into his life the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Now Eden in Hebrew, means delight. Diba? So, kumbaga, pag inexplain natin, the story opens with Adam, the proto-human, alone with God in the garden of delight. Napakaganda. Ikaw lang at ang Diyos. You're in a place called, called delight where you're supposed to delight in everything that there is. You're supposed to enjoy the garden. You're supposed to enjoy the animals. You're supposed to enjoy the time with God. Perfect, diba? Ang ganda. It's like a perfect communing moment with God. And yet, hindi dyan nagtatapos yung kwento. Along the way, what does God say? Sabi niya, think again, the very next line is tragic. The story strikes a dissonant minor chord because the Lord God said, nababasa natin, ano sabi po yung nakared? Yan. It is not good for man to be alone. Now, that's something very interesting because again and again and again, paulit-ulit, sabi, everything that the Lord saw was good. Diba? Genesis 1. And the Lord saw it was good. And the Lord saw it was good. And the Lord saw it was good. And the Lord saw it was very good. Then finally, nakita niya si Adam. And he saw that it was not good. Kumbaga, nung nakita niya how he, he made humanity, how it was supposed to be, he saw something that was strangely imperfect from a God who supposedly made everything and saw that it was good. Kumbaga, para siyang nakakita ng flaw in the design. So, what does he do? Sabi niya, I will make a helper suitable for him. This comes as a surprise when you read Genesis 1. The narrative is written in semi-poetic language, and the refrain all throughout the story is God saw that it was good. God created the land and the sea, and God saw that it was good. God created plants and trees and vegetation, and God saw that it was good. God created the sun and moon and stars, and God saw that it was good. But right after God created Adam, He said, It is not good for Adam to be alone. Kaya sabi niya, the Hebrew can be translated as, whoops, nagkamali ang Diyos, nagkulang. Sabi ko, tindi, no? That's a very, very difficult thing to come to terms with. Pag tinignan natin, aksidente ba ang tao? Di ba? Aksidente ba na nagawa ng Diyos mag-isa? Why is it not good? Sabi niya, well, there are two problems. First, Adam is alone. That's a problem because he's created in the image of God and God exists in a web of relationships. We'll talk more about this. 
But for now, sabi niya, just note that Adam was hardwired for relationships and his aloneness is not a good thing. The second problem is one of logistics. Adam is called to take care of the garden, but when you do the math, you figure out that the garden was the size of a continent. It's not a garden in the sense of a park. It's more like a national forest, millions of square miles of wilderness, wild, untamed, and teeming with potentiality. It's way too much work for one man. He needs help, and there's a calling on Adam's life, but what does he realize? He cannot do it alone. Make sure you get that. Why does Paul talk again and again and again about love? There is something deeply important there. Sabi nga po, when you look at 1 Corinthians 11 to 14, Paul talks about something very important. He talks about how to fix our relationship with God. But in the midst of all of that, he, st- he ends up in 1 Corinthians 13, which is a verse or a chapter dedicated to love. Diba? Yun yung paborito ng mga tao sa kasal. Love is patient, love is kind, love holds no record of wrong, love is not envious, and dami-dami. Why does he focus on something that it seems to be is not too important to us? Sabi nga po nila, pag tinignan natin, what do we want in life? They have found, sino po ba dito ang gusto niyo sa buhay ay magkapera? Yan, buti may mga honest. Kala ko walang honest dito eh. Diba? Pagdating sa usapan, yun ang gusto natin. Shucks, kailangan ko magkapera. Eh di ba, na-discuss nga natin, what is the number? Yung meron particular number na pag maabot mo yun, generally masaya ka. So, siyempre, lahat ng tao gusto niyan. Sa ibang tao gusto nila, pagkakilalan, pagkakilala. Di ba? So, fame. A lot of people want fame. Sabi nga po nila, kakaibay. Eh. Nung unang panahon, ang mga pang- pangarap daw ng tao, maging presidente, maging ano, maging uh, fireman, superhero, yung mga ganun. Alam nyo daw po nagbago, sa panahon na to, gusto na daw ng tao maging popular. So given the choice, do you want to be president of a school or the personal assistant of Justin Bieber? Alam nyo most people that will pick personal assistant. Sabi ko, tindi, no? Kasi ano ba nangyayari pag presidente ka na school? Wala. Di ba? So in today's world, Love does not seem to be a very important thing. Now, it's strange because we talk about it a lot. Pinag-uusapan natin siya ng madalas. But it's not something that we tend to give a lot of focus to. Because when you think about love, it's always in context of relationships. Or, ro- sorry, no, romance. Diba? And I'm here to say, ang sana ang pick-up natin dito is not about romance. Because yes, it's in the context of a marriage. But you want to know how I begin every single wedding I officiate? So, I've officiated over 50 weddings. Okay? Alam nyo paano ako nagsisimula ng wedding? Ganito. Parang, parang pakiramdam nyo, kinasal na rin kayo. Diba? I start off with saying, 49% of all couples are unhappy. Alam nyo po ba yun? 49% of all couples are unhappy. Now, 51% of all single people are happy. So, alam nyo po yun? Okay na. Not bad. Parang patas lang. Now, here's another thing. I begin with this way. Everybody is born at a 50% happiness set point. In other words, 50% of the time, we're happy. Okay? Now, when we get married, that happiness set point jumps up 3%. So, ilan na po yun? Kulang ng kape. 50 plus 3. 53%. So you become happier by 3% for two weeks. Two weeks lang. After noon, your happiness set point drops down by 5%. So ilan ang ending mo? 48. You end up less happy than when you started. Yung mama may asawa sabi, oh nga. De, joke lang yon. Now, although that is true, Diba? The, this is just simply statistics. And the problem of statistics is it does not look at people. When you look at people, you must understand that each person is different. If you're a number, walang nangyayari dyan. So when we look at big statistics, parang tama. If you get married, you end up with a worse life. 
However, when we look at people who did things right, did things right, okay? Yung tipong nag-asawa sila ng tamang paraan na pag pinag-usapan natin yan, how to pick the right partner, how to ano, aabot tayo ng apat na oras. Gusto nyo ba? Hindi, di ba? Yung mga tao dito, parang uh, meron na akong partner, ayoko na malaman na nagkamali ako. Yung mga ganong usapan. Di ba? So, for example, just two things. Number one, you must have at least a three-year relationship. Okay? Three-year relationship bago ka tumalon. Number two, you must have a friendship before your courtship. So, dapat meron kang pagkaibigan kasi romance fades but friendship does not. So, may mga bagay-bagay na ganun na kinakailangan i-consider when it comes to relationships. But, when we look at the people who did things right, somewhere around 85% of all couples become happy. So, kung tama ang ginawa mo, ang asawa ay blessing. Pero kung mali, ang asawa ay sumpa. Now, yung mga may asawa, tignan nyo na lang asawa ninyo at ipag-pray nyo na blessing siya. ba? Now, that's why it's not a matter of marriage. It's a matter of relationships. We must understand that God built us for relationship regardless of whether it's romantic, filial, or what not. Diba? Kaya kinakailangan maintindihan natin why love is important. Now, to discuss this further, I'd like to go to another book. This book is written by Eric Barker and it is called Place Well with Others. Sabi po, the surprising science behind why everything you know about relationships is mostly wrong. So ang ginawa po niya, inaral po niya yung iba't ibang mga sayisms like no man is an island, a friend in need is a friend indeed, yung mga ganong kasabihan, and inaral niya what is the truth behind each statement. So he goes, in his 1624 book, Devotions Upon Emergent Occasions, John Donne wrote, No man is an island. Okay? John Donne is a very well-known poet. So he didn't back up his statement with any proof. In other words, he wrote a five-word maxim that made him famous for centuries and left me to do all the heavy lifting. Kaya sabi niya, jerk. Anyway, plenty of classical thinkers have agreed with Donne. Aristotle wrote, Man is by nature a social animal and felt that anyone who could exist alone was either a beast or a god. In chapter 2 of Genesis, you'll find, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. Throughout much of history, exile was one of the most terrible sentences, sometimes regarded as worse than death. Being Alufus Maximus was not a good thing in the ancient world, and not all that much has changed. Do you know what the United Nations calls solitary confinement in excess of 15 days? Torture. Grabe oh. Kung 15 days, lampas ng 15 days kang mag-isa, tawag pala nun under the United States Geneva Convention, torture. It's not something good. Kaya sabi niya, I'm not here to make the case for being a hermit. If we were really better off without, sorry, really better off completely without other people, this would be a very, very short book. But, the irony is, increasingly, we're all acting like hermits. Sabi niya, increasingly, nagiging ermitanyo tayo. Now, does anyone know what a hermit looks like? Hermit. Hindi kermit, ha? Makakala niyo yung palakayon sa Sesame Street. Hindi. A hermit. A hermit is someone who takes himself out of society and lives alone. So usually, yung nakikita natin, ito yung mga matatanda, na mahaba, sobra yung balbas, may tungkod, tapos marang may mahi ka, yung mga datingan, ermitanyo, di ba? Now, here's something ironic. In the 21st century, a hermit does not look like that. Because once upon a time, hermiting meant to take yourself out of society. In fact, the word loneliness, did you know, did not exist before 1800. Before, when you are lonely, it simply meant you are solitary. Ibig sabihin nun, it is the time that you use to work on yourself. So pag naglalakad ka mag-isa, you're lonely. Hindi yan masamang bagay. When you're working by yourself, you're lonely. Hindi masamang bagay yan. But today, tignan nyo yung katabi ninyo. Mukha bang lonely yan? 
Grabe, ayaw nyo tignan, natatakot kayo ah. Hindi ba today, the word lonely does not have good connotations. Meron niyang kanta, di ba? Lonely. I'm Mr. Lonely. Ano sabi? I have nobody. Hindi nyo alam? To call my own. Di ba? May ganun pa. Kung ano-ano nangyayari. Now today, the connotation of the word lonely is someone who does not have anyone in his life or her life. Once upon a time, to be lonely just meant you were working on yourself. And it's strange, it arrived at 1800 where the word lonely became something totally different. It now meant the state, the emotional state of feeling like you're alone. Now that's something strange because during the 1800s is what we call the age of enlightenment. Enlightenment. It began with someone called Rene Descartes who said, Cogito ergo sum. Diba? Ang ibig sabihin ng cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore, I am. The fact that I am a thinking being makes me a human being. That means I am an individual. By definition, individual means indivisible. Ibig sabihin, alone, take everything away, this is who I am. That was the birth of something called individualism. Now, taken from face value, walang problema ang individualism. Because individualism is what allowed us to pursue individual interests. Okay? Yan yung rason, but may mga tao, yung kanilang path sa buhay, hindi katulad ng path ng magulang nila. So for example, di ba, once upon a time, if you were born as a farmer, you're probably, sorry, if you're born to farmers, you're probably gonna be a farmer. And your children are probably gonna be farmers. Wala kang upward mobility. Hindi magandang usapan. Today, it does not matter to whom you are born, ang buhay mo is dependent on yourself. Hindi ba magandang bagay yun? Na pwede kang makaangat? So, from face value, hindi masama ang individualism. The problem is, we have entered into a time called hyper-individualism. Hyper-individualism. Somewhere around the 50s, in America, there was a concept born called the nuclear family. Have you ever heard of the concept, the nuclear family? So, ang nuclear family is simple. Ang meron lang sa bahay mo, immediate family as opposed to the extended family. Ang extended family, yung tipong sa bahay mo, nandyan yung magulang mo, nandyan yung mga tito-tita, nandyan yung mga lolo-lola, ulti mo yung kapit-bahay mo, pasok labas dyan. ba? Yan ang tinatawag extended family. In the 1950s, the nuclear family was invented where the focus was really yung apat, dalawang magulang at dalawang anak. So that became like the staple hindi na konektado sa mga relatives. This was in 1950, which was how many years ago? Ha? Huh? Kaya natin to. 70 years ago. Today, the nuclear family is gone. Because from 1996 to 2006, something happened in society. We started living alone. Okay? We're in a place called Metro Manila. Now, before we think that this is an American problem, this is a 21st century problem. When I say we're in, the, in Metro Manila, there's a reason why it's called Metro Manila. Diba? Kasi ang dami, siyang, dami niyang mga syudad na pinagsama-sama to form what is called the Metro, the Metropolitan. The place where all the action happens. Diba? Now, because this is the place where all the action happens, it follows that people will go where the job opportunities are. Hindi po ba? Siyempre, kung gusto mo makipagsapalaran, alam mo ipagsapalaran ka dun sa, alam mo yun? Sa tupada dun sa kung saan mang kanto, di ba? You want to be in the big rig. You want to be where all the action is happening. Now, what that has created is, hindi po ba, a lot of us were not really born and raised manilenios. A lot of us came from provinces. Na lumipat tayo sa Metro Manila simply because Metro Manila carried all of the opportunities. 
That's why the population of Metro Manila exploded to about 20 million. At least yun yung last na ano ko. Kanina po, sabi po nila, the more conservative numbers is about 14 million. Ang problema ng 14 million, hindi natin bilang yung mga hindi nagpaparehistro. ba? So they say the number is at about 20 million in the whole of Metro Manila. Now, 20 million people. In the 20 million people, yun bang mga 20 million magkakakilala? Ha? Huh? Hindi, di ba? Most of, more often than not, we're not, you know, friendly with one another. In fact, maglakad kayo sa kalye, daan kayo sa kiyapo, paglakad nyo ng kiyapo, may nagsabi sa inyo, Hello! Ano gagawin nyo? Di ba? Di ba? Lalayo ka dun sa tao na yun, baka mamaya may masamang balak. Alam natin yan eh, sa mga tao nagko-commute, di ba? Yung masyadong friendly, ano to? Nang di-distract para yung kasama niya, manakawan ako. Di ba? Pansin niyo po, we're in a place with 20 million people, but we don't care about one another. In fact, for many of us, yung circle natin does not extend further than about five people. Sa totoo lang, ilan po sa atin, meron po tayong nalalapitang tao para kwentohin ang buong buhay natin. Meron, meron. Yan, meron. Yung iba, mas komportable mag-share sa mga anonymous na tao online. That's why if you know, one of the places where a lot of sharing happens is actually not Instagram or Facebook, it's actually Reddit. Diba? Reddit, which is a place where it has subservers, where people are completely anonymous and they can tell their problems to other people. And other people who don't know you might be able to offer advice. Now, pag tinignan natin yun, maganda ba yun? Sa isang banda, maganda yun sa mga taong walang tao, walang mga minamahal sa buhay or walang malapitan. However, when you listen to that, is that really what we're supposed to be doing? When we're in need, sino ang lalapitan natin? When we are, you know, we need some help, where do we go? Alang nga naman we go to the internet at sabi natin, lumalapit lang po, nagpapakumbaba, nagpapatulong. Once upon a time, we would go to our family. But the family unit has been destroyed. Once upon a time, we would go to our neighbors. But the neighborhood has been destroyed. In the 21st century, loneliness has become an epidemic. Okay? Now, sabi po niya, Social scientist Bella De Paolo writes, Never before in history have so many people lived alone. Now, sabi po niya, unlike solitary confinement, we've been deliberately choosing this. Before World War II, it wasn't all that economically feasible to live alone. But as we've gotten richer, understandably, we wanted more freedom and control. I can relate. I lived alone and I'm cooped up writing a book, a process I describe as how to develop agoraphobia in one easy step. Sabi niya, we love autonomy, but some suggest this is what's making us lonely. What's making us lonely is the fact that we like being alone. We are lonely. Even before the 2020 pandemic, 75% of UK doctors said they saw patients every day whose main complaint was loneliness. In 2017, the problem got so bad with more than 9 million lonely Britons that the country appointed the Minister of Loneliness. And the number of people in the United States who report being lonely stands, according to one study, at around 62 million people. Grabe, no? Lampas kalahating Pilipinas ang lonely. That's the entire population of the United Kingdom. Studies vary, but it looks like just over a quarter of Americans report regularly feeling lonely. Leading expert John Cacioppo has said that the number has increased by 3 to 7% just over the past two decades. Now, why is this important? The health and happiness effects of sustained loneliness on your body is, to use a technical term, poop your pants scary. It makes me want to run outside, hug the first stranger I see, and maybe reconsider my career choice. Because Cacioppo's research has shown, pahinga nyo to, ha, that loneliness is the emotional equivalent of a physical assault. 
pag lonely ka daw, ang pakiramdam mo parang araw-araw kang binubugbog. The stress response is as high as someone who's in a fight. Naisipin niyo po yun, no? Araw-araw, every minute of the day, pakiramdam mo, inaaway ka. Now, is that good for our health? Sabi po niyo, loneliness sends your brain into perpetual high alert mode. In the lab, lonely people notice risks twice as fast as non-lonely people. 150 milliseconds versus 300 milliseconds. We don't usually think of loneliness increasing reaction time, but the evolutionary theory behind it makes sense. You better have eyes in the back of your head, pal, because if things go sideways, nobody is coming to help. An attitude like that may have been quite useful in our ancestral environment, but it certainly isn't conducive to happiness. Now, anong sabi po niya? Repeated studies have shown that what the happiest people have in common is... Ano daw po? Yan ang gusto ko. Not relationships, pero anong, ano niya, precursor? What kind of relationships? Good relationships. Hands down. An economic study titled Putting a Price Tag on Friends, Relatives, and Neighbors puts the happiness value of a better social life at an additional 131,000 US dollars per year. Ang ibig sabihin yan, if we have a good relationship, sino ba dito mahiling mag-save? Mag-ipon. Mag-ipon. Ayan, mga mahilig sa pera. Ay, hindi, joke. Yeah? If you have good friends, you are saving around 131,000 US dollars per year. Yan ang equivalent niya. Paano? Why and how? Tingnan nyo, ah. Loneliness, sabi niya, is bad for your health. It is so bad for your health, I'm surprised insurance companies don't mandate you put this book down and go see friends because studies have connected loneliness with an increased rate of heart disease, stroke, dementia, and pretty much every other awful thing you can think of. Why is a good relationship worth $131,000? Because it saves you from having these things. Grabe, no? Niisipin nyo po lang, no? Pag pumunta kayo sa ospital para magpagamot, how much are you gonna spend if you have, let's say, a heart attack? How much are you gonna spend if you have, let's say, a stroke in recovery? Diba po? Yung mga bagay na to. Yun pala, yung mga bagay na to are directly related to something called chronic degenerative disease. Chronic degenerative disease. By definition, chronic, ibig sabihin mabilis o matagal? Matagal. Degenerative, ibig sabihin mabuti o masama? Masama. Disease. Chronic degenerative disease. Over a long period of time, konti-konti nagde-degenerate yung katawan. And they have found, chronic degenerative disease is directly related to cortisol. Cortisol, which is another word for stress. Now, isipin niyo po yun. Pag stress tayo, anong masarap gawin? Ha? Sabi nung isa, kumain. Oo, masarap rin yan. Sabi nung isa, mag-shopping. Oo, masarap rin yan. Pero anong masarap gawin pag mabigat ang buhay? May makausap, di ba? You know why? That's called completing the stress cycle. When it comes to how we were made, whenever something happens in our life, our stress response goes up. And the only way to bring down that stress response is to connect with other people. Now, buti sana ko ako lang nagsasalita nito. Pick up the book, Burnout, written by Emily Nagoski. Anong sabi ang findings niya? We developed over time that we need other people to help us calm down and relax. What happens when we don't have other people? We are in a constant state of stress. We are constantly lost. We are constantly thinking everything is out against us. And this makes us sick. This makes us unhappy. Is it any wonder Romans 12.9 tells us, let love be genuine. 
dapat totoo. Love one another. Outdo one another in showing honor. Parang sinasabi sa atin, learn how to become a human being and connect to other people. Why? Because loneliness is not the way that God made us. Genesis 2, paulit-ulit ko sasabihin, it is not good. Isa lang ang nakita ng Diyos na not good. Ano po yun? That man is alone. Now, we have to take stock. Kasi po, if this is us, we, we know that it, God made us to love, to outdo one another in showing honor, being hospitable, extending kindness, knowing how to treat one another correctly. Maybe for some of us, we find, Baka, bakit kaya ganon? Wala akong taong malapitan. Wala akong taong makausap. Wala akong taong kaya kong sabihin na, ito, I have a good relationship with this person. Maybe, this is a time for us to check our social fitness. Now, that's something that I introduced a few weeks ago and I said I will be talking about over the next two weeks. And social fitness is something that a lot of us don't think about because sanay tayo sa physical fitness. Diba? Now, every year, hindi po ba nagkakaroon tayo ng physical? Ano ang physical? Ha? Huh? Yung clearance, di ba? Ba't tayo pini-physical test? To see if we are still compatible with life. Kasi baka mamaya, may problema na yung katawan natin na hindi natin alam, at mamaya at mamaya, tumumba na lang tayo patay. Now, if there is a physical test, there must be a social test. Because we have spent too long not prioritizing our relationships. In the book, The Good Life, written by Robert Waldinger and Mark Schultz, paita ko lang po. Ito po siya, The Good Life, Lessons from the World's Longest Scientific Study of Happiness. Create a more meaningful and satisfying life. See, Robert Waldinger is the fourth director of the longest study on human development in history. It's called the Harvard Study of Adult Development. And it has been alive for over 80 years. 80 years na nilang inaaral yung mga tao. And anong nahanap niya? Sabi po niya, oh. There is no longer any doubt that the mind and the body are intertwined. When a new emotional or physical stimulus is encountered, the entire mind-body system is affected. Sometimes in minuscule ways, sometimes in massive ways. And the changes can have a cyclical effect with the mind affecting the body, which then affects the mind, and so on. So kung anong dinadaan, pinagdadaanan ng isip natin, yun pala na pinagdadaanan rin ng katawan natin. So the medical term that they call is psychosomatic. Diba? Kung anong laman ng isip natin, yun ang nararanasan ng katawan. So alam niyo po yun, sino ba dito mahilig manood ng sine? Kawawa naman yung mga tao dito. Walang nanunod ng sine dito. Yan. Sino po dito, ang paborito nyo ay horror. Ayan. Yung The Exorcist Believe. Yung dating. Sino dito paborito nyo? Action. Ayan. Sino dito paborito? Suspense. Yan. Sino dito mahilig sa drama? Yan, mga kulang ng drama yung buhay. Diba? Sino naman dito paborito comedy? Talagang sinabi ko palang comedy, may natawa na, no? You know, that's the reason why ako po, when it comes to what I prefer watching, I like watching comedies because what the mind thinks on, what the mind dwells upon, becomes the state of the body. Yung minsan sabi sa akin, alam niyo po, minsan may nakausap po akong tao, pinag-usapan namin ang mga multo. Okay? Tingnan niyo yung katabi ninyo, hindi yan multo. Pero tanong mo siya, naniniwala ka ba sa multo? O, di ba? Yan yung mga issue ng mga tao, eh. naniniwala ka ba sa multo? Tinanong sa akin, coach, may multo ba? Tanong sa akin ba naman, may multo ba? Sabi ko, wala. Sabi ko, paano mo alam, coach? Sabi niya sa akin, alam niyo po kasi, alam niyo, kung ang multo totoo, Lahat ng mamamatay tao ngayon, may multong sumusunod sa kanila. Naisip po ba natin yun? Kunyari, ikaw, pinatay ka, naging multo ka. Sino mumultuhin mo? Alam ka naman pamilya mo. 
Kawawa naman pamilya mo. Kung ako maging multo, mumultuhin ko yung pinakamasasamang tao sa buhay ko. Di ba? Eh bakit silang saya-saya? So sabi ko, walang multo. Pangalawa, sabi ko, pumunta ako sa haunted house. Tumira ako doon ng isang araw. Okay? Tapos sabi ko, magpakita kayo sa akin. Alam niyo ang nangyari? Wala ko nakita. Sabi sa akin, Coach, nagawa mo yun? Ang tapang mo naman, hindi ako matapang, duwag ako. Pero it just so happens, I'm very curious. Paano ko alam na duwag ako? Alam niyo hindi mo mapapaapak sa horror. Kung mapapak mo ako sa horror, nakaganon ako. Ayoko nakikita yan. Kaya pansinin niyo po, ang mga tao, anong reason kung ba't, nila, ba't sila nanonood ng horror? Ha? Kasi gusto nila matakot, alam naman gusto nila matawa. Diba? Kaya ang nangyayari, pagdating sa totoong buhay, matapang manood ng horror, pero pagdating sa totoong horror ng buhay, biglang hindi kinakaya. Because what the mind dwells on, the body feels. There's something deeply important with our understanding. What the mind dwells on, the body feels. When we always feel as if we're tired, the body becomes tired. When we always feel as if we are lonely, the body becomes lonely. When we always feel that life is difficult, life becomes very difficult. They have found one of the most important things to do in life is framing. Framing. F-R-A-M-I-N-G. Another word for it is contextualization. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Pag may mangyari sa buhay, anong tingin natin? Masama o mabuti? Now ito, very strange. They have found around 70% of bad happenings lead to good outcomes. Grabe, no? Yung mga masasamang pangyayari, it actually leads to good outcomes. And about 70% of good outcomes lead to bad outcomes. Sabi ko, tinding usapan nito. So, totoo bang merong mabuti at masama na pangyayari sa buhay? Diba? Strangely, that's an answer that seems to be more complicated to answer. There's a TED Talk, one of the most famous TED Talks of all time. Sabi niya, what is the one gift that she's happy to have survived? Tindi, no? Ang regalo gusto natin usually masaya. Para ng Pasko, ito ng panahon ng mga exchange gift. Dadami na naman ang mga sucks natin. Diba? Usually, when we think about gifts, we think that they need to be good. Now, sabi niya, the one gift I'm thankful I survived. She's a woman who comes from a very dysfunctional family. Her family ended up going, you know, everywhere. Siya, she lived in a particular place. Yung magulang niya lives in another place. Yung mga kapatid niya lives in other places. And they probably talk to each other once every two years or so. The usual American lifestyle. Because America is special compared to other countries because America is the only place where you can uproot yourself and transfer. Sabi nga po eh, it's a group of 50 states. Technically, it's 50 countries you can change in. Kaya mapapansin natin, watak-watak ang mga tao sa Amerika. Disjointed. Sa Pilipinas, mahirap gawin po yun. Mahirap lumipat ang basta-basta. Kasi unang-una, kunyari, manilenyo ka, lumipat ka sa Cebu, kinakailang matuto ka muna magsalita na Cebuano. Hindi ganun kadali. Gusto mo lumipat sa Bicol, depende pa, san ka? Totoong Bicolano ba yung salita o Bisacol? Diba? Ang hirap maintindihan. Lumipat ka ng Pangasinan, naku po, mahirap na usapan na naman. Everywhere we go, it, there is a hurdle. Whereas in America, there is a common language, a common uh, monetary value, and a common understanding. So para kang lumilipat in 50 states, iba't iba. Iba't ibang bansa, pwede kang lumipat anytime may problema buhay mo. So, yan na naging buhay nitong babae na to. Nagkawatak-watak ang buhay niya. So, one day, she makes a wish. Sabi niya, I wish my family would come back. Magsasama-sama uli. Now, sabi nga po, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. Because God ended up answering her prayer. She got diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. Grabe, no? 
when she got diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, sabi sa kanya ng doktor, it is time for you to f- put your affairs in order. You need to talk to the people who matter, tell them that you're about to die, fix your papers, everything, ayusin mo. So she goes and tells her parents, Ma, Dad, I'm dying. Sabi niya sa mga kapatid niya, I'm dying. Ganon. Yung mga kapatid niya at pamilya, nagsalita bigla. Sabi nila, where are you right now? We will go to you. Yung pamilya niya, na watak-watak, biglaan nagsama-sama. No nagsama-sama, mamaya, nag-usap-usap sila, naalala mo yung mga panahon na ganito? Naalala mo yung mga panahon na ganito? Naalala mo yung mga ganito? Sabi nila, ba't ba natigil yun lahat? Ah, kasi nag-away tayo sa ganito, nag-away tayo sa ganon. Di ba na mag-ganon ganito, bla 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 bla. Sabi nila bigla, ngayon na namamatay na ako, sabi niya, parang walang kwenta, no? Ba't ba tayo nag-away-away? Ba't ba tayo naghiwa-hiwalay? Kaya, nagkaayusan sila bilang pamilya. Stage 4 cancer, she was about to die. Eh, nagkamilagro. Gumaling siya. Nung gumaling siya, nagkawatak-watak. Hindi, joke lang. What was fixed during that time remained fixed. So sabi niya, it is the one gift that she was so thankful that she survived. Alam niyo po, yun yun eh. Yung we have to think, what are we doing here? What are the things that really matter? We think that things that don't matter actually matter. Pero yung sa totoo lang, when we come to the end of our lives, what is one thing that we want to be able to say? That the people who mattered, I took care of. Diba? Ngayon, sabi nyo, going back to this book, modern society, though more medically advanced than ever before, encourages some habits and routines that are not healthy for body or mind. Let's just take one. Lack of exercise. Ang mga taong hindi daw kumikilos. 50,000 years ago, a homo sapiens living in a river settlement with her tribe would have gotten the physical exercise she needed simply through the effort of staying alive. Now, vast numbers of people are able to provide food, shelter, and safety for themselves with little or no exercise. Never before has so much human life taken place in a seated position, and a great deal of the physical work we do is repetitive and potentially damaging. Kaya sabi niya, ang masama daw, upo tayo ng upo. Our bodies do not take care of themselves in this environment. They need something called maintenance. Okay? Ang maintenance, hindi gamot. Sabi niya, oh, kung upo tayo ng upo, by the way, if we're honest, if we sit for more than 12 hours a day, it increases our all-cause mortality by 75%. Kaya yung mga taong upo ng upo, malapit na kayo kunin ni Lord. Diba? Sitting is one of the most dangerous things that we do. That's why to stand and to move is very important. Of course, in the right measure. Alam niyo po yun. Hindi ko sinasabi kung hindi ka makalakad, wala ka ng pag-asa. Hindi. But kumbaga, physical exertion. So anong sabi niyang maintenance ng katawan? If those of us in sedentary or repetitive jobs want to maintain our physical fitness, we have to make a conscious effort to move. We have to set time aside to walk, garden, do yoga, run, or go to the gym. We have to overcome the currents of modern life. The same is true for our social fitness. It's not easy to take care of relationships today. And in fact, we tend to think that once we establish friendships and intimate relationships, they will take care of themselves. Alam niyo yung isang bagay na sobrang ano, hilig sabihin ng mga tao ngayon? They love low-maintenance friendships. Diba? Have you heard of low-maintenance friendships? A low-maintenance friendship is yung tipong once lang kayo magkita sa isang taon, tas okay na. Hindi nyo na kinakailangan makita ang isa't isa hanggang next year. Diba? Yun ang gusto ng mga tao ngayon. Low-maintenance friendships. 
Why are low-maintenance friendships in high demand? Because our lives are fast-paced. Fast-paced. Now, recently, may nagtanong sa akin, Coach, gusto ko magkaibig- magkaroon ng kaibigan. Ano bang kailangan kong gawin? So sabi ko, bakit ka ba walang kaibigan? Eh, Coach, kasi napaka-busy ko. Every time may mag sa akin lumabas, palagi ko sinasabing may trabaho ako. Okay? So, kailan ka last niyaya? Siguro mga two years ago. Pero bago ko iyaya before, linggo-linggo ako niyayaya. Pero mga ten times ako niyaya, nung pang 11 hindi na ako niyayaya. Sabi ko, hindi namang usapan nito. Ba't ka ba busy? Alipin ako ng salapi. Diba? Tingnan nyo yung katabi ninyo. Yun yun ni. Eh. ba? We notice our lives are very busy. From the moment we wake up, we're on the go, until the moment we fall asleep. Minsan, yung isip pa natin, magulo pa habang natutulog. ba? So we don't like high-maintenance friendships. Pero sabi ko, alam nyo po, kung gusto mo magkaroon ng kaibigan, kinakailangan marunong ka magsayang ng oras. Bakit? Friendships and relationships are things that we spend, or sorry, are people that we spend time with. We cannot say we are friendly with someone when we don't spend time with them. We cannot say we're good friends with someone when we don't even talk to them. Diba? For us to get to a point of good relationships, we must learn how to cultivate relationships. And to cultivate relationships, it requires time. It requires effort. And it requires sacrifice. Bakit? Ito ah, sa relationship, bawal KJ. Ang problema, di ba meron mga tao na ubod ng KJ, ayaw nyo na yayain? Kaya how do we become friends? How do we get into a good relationship? It begins by taking care of our social fitness. Pano? We must be deliberate with our time. Kumbaga, ito yun ah. You want to have a simple rule or you want to have a good realization, ito lang. If you're 40 years old, think about someone that you love very much. Okay? Now, it can be someone you're at home with or it can be someone na hindi mo nakikita madalas. But you think this person is a good friend of mine. This person is a good relationship of mine. This can be a father, a mother, a sister, a brother, or whatnot. Basta, someone we feel we have a good relationship with. 40 years old, okay? Now, supposing this person we have a good relationship with, we see once a week for a one-hour coffee session. Okay? It means... In 52 weeks, ilang oras po nagkikita? Sige, alam nyo po, pag mag-math kayo, hindi kayo aantokin. Ilang, ilang oras yon? 52 hours. Divide that by 24? Ilan yon? Kaya natin to. Two days and four hours. ba? So per year, this person you love, you will see for two days and four hours. At the age of 40, the average lifespan is about 75 years old. Okay? That means, at 40 years old, you only have 35 years left to spend with this person. Now, we know, buti sana kung lahat na tao umabot na 75. Buti sana, Kung lahat ng linggo, walang napapatid na plano. ba? So, if you only see a person two days out of a year, times 35, ilan? Grabe. 70. That means, this person you love, before you die, you will only see 70 days left. Sipin nyo yun, no? That's very sobering. Bakit? Don't we always say, we don't have time for people? We always say, tsaka na pag hindi ako busy. Tsaka na pag okay yung panahon. Tsaka na. Yung anak ko, okay lang. Next time na, masyado akong busy ngayon. Yung asawa ko, next time na, masyado akong busy ngayon. Yung kaibigan ko na yan, next time na, masyado na akong busy. We always say these things, but we don't realize, if you're 40, you only have 70 days left with the person you love most. Now, we think, Hindi, bata pa ako, 18 pa lang ako. Even when you're 18, that number does not go up to 100. Grabe, no? Nakakatakot na number yun. 
these people who we call loved ones, we will only see for a very limited number of time. Now, with that being said, bibilangan pa ba natin ng oras yung mga yon? This is a reminder to carve out time. You know, one time, kasama ko po yung tatay ko. Yung tatay ko po, kilala nyo naman yung tatay ko. He's a very, very intense person. No? Very, very intense. And that's putting it lightly. Diba? So, very intense siya. And kami po, as a family, alam po namin na ang priority ng tatay ko is the church. That's why his first love is God and the church. Second lang ang family. And as children, it's something that we've, un- we've come to understand. We were born into this. Mahira para sa amin kasi we always crave to have time with our, with our dad. Pero alam niyo po yun, anak kami. You know what I realized was very difficult? Yung nanay ko. Kasi siya, hindi naman niya anak, hindi naman siya anak ng tatay ko, asawa, in other words, pinili niya yun. Diba? At alam niyo naman po natin, when we get married, we expect to spend the rest of our lives with this person. Now, how does that feel if this person that we spend the rest of our lives with is always absent? Diba masakit? But, you know, dun, ako na, dun ko nare-respeto na matindi nanay ko. Yung nanay ko made it work. And yung tatay ko, it, he made it work as well. So one time, nasa table talk kami with couples. Okay? Mga may asawa. Yung tatay ko, alala natin, intense magsalita. Sige, sampulan ko kayo. Hindi ko kayo maintindihan. Sabi niya, kayo, nagsiselebrate ng valentines. Kayo, nagbibigay kayo ng bulaklak sa asawa nyo. Mga kadiri. Diba? Ganun magsalita tatay ko eh. Huh? Hindi ko kayo maintindihan. Ako, kahit kailan, hindi ko binalentines sa asawa ko. Kahit kailan, hindi ko binigyan ng rosas. Sabi niya, kaya nabigyan ko ng kotse asawa ko. Yung mga kapos, nakikinig. Sabi niya, BLC, ba't kayo ganyan? Namumroblema na ako ngayon, tinitignan ako ng asawa ko, hinahanapan ako ng kotse, oh. Hindi, sabi niya, hindi. Lahat yan may pinanggagalingan. Tapos kuinento niya, nung nagsisimula sa buhay ang tatay at nanay ko, siyempre, nagkaroon na, na anak, kaya sila nagsama. And after that, nagkaroon na naman ng anak, nagkaroon na naman ng anak. Eh, alam naman natin, mahirap magpalaki ng anak. Kinausap ng tatay ko yung nanay ko, sabi niya, Ne, gusto mo ba palagi ako nandyan para tulungan ka sa pamilya? O gusto mo ba may pagsapalaran ako sa labas para may chance ako manalo? At pag manalo ako, aangat yung pamilya natin. Yung nanay ko, sabi niya, sige, layas ka. Hindi, joke lang. Sabi niya, sige, go. Subukan mo manalo. And my father did precisely that. Sinubukan niyang manalo, lumaban siya. And yung, alam niyo po, yung nanay ko became a very good supporter of my dad. Now, you know, nung sinasabi niya po yun, sabi niya, sig- meron siyang sinabi na hindi ko po makalimutan. Sabi niya lang sa mga couples, siguraduhin mo lang, may uuwian ka pa. So sabi ko, ha? Ano si Binon? Kasi siyempre, siga tatay ko eh, di ba? Biglang sabi niya, siguraduhin, sir- siguraduhin mo lang, may uuwian ka pa. You know something that I would never forget? My mom and dad were together for about, what, 36, 37 years? So, 36, 37 years. Alam niyo po, up to the day that my mother died, you know something that I would never forget? Kami po kasi, we would always try to find time with our parents and it never always happened. Minsan nangyayari, minsan hindi. But I would always see, pag Monday, yung tatay at nanay ko, bigla magpapaalam, sige, bye-bye, lalabas kami, sasabihin namin, pwede kami sumama? No. ba? No. Eh kami parang, ha, hindi ka na nga namin nakikita, bawal pa kami sumama. Sabi niya, no, hindi, kami lang to. Tsaka na, Saturday kayo, sa Monday, kami lang ng nanay mo. And they would go out, mawala sila buong gabi, tas uuwi na lang ng, ano, ng gabi. At I would always see, masaya sila after. You know what I realized they were doing when I grew up? Kaya pala hindi pa kami pwede sumama. Ano kaya ginagawa nila? Kinukulam kami. For 36 years, they would never fail to date every single week. No nakita ko yun, alam mo, nakita ko yung soft side ng tatay ko eh. Nakita ko na pwede palang ganun. 
Because sometimes, di ba, when we get married, what happens is the romance dies. Kasi we take people for granted. We take, ah, hindi, okay na, asawa ko na to, palagi ko na kasama eh. Di ba? We take our children for granted. Ah, hindi, okay lang, palagi ko na kasama yan eh. You know what I saw with my father? He would always try to spend time with my mother. For 36 years of marriage, ito yung hindi ligawan to ah, mag-asawa na. They would never fail to date every single week. Kaya pala sabi ng tatay ko, siguraduhin mo lang, may uuwian ka pa. My father understood what maintenance was like. Minsan yun yung problema po natin eh. We forget, we must maintain our social fitness as well. Maybe for some of us, we need to remember, there are people that we love in our lives that we don't spend enough time with. When that's the case, maybe we should start asking, Uy, free ka ba? Kung hindi, okay, kailan ka free? Schedule na natin yan. We only have a set number of days left. Konti na lang ang panahon natin kasama ang mga tao minamahal natin. Let's not forget, don't take them for granted. That's the reason why when we look at it, God designed us to have a very practical understanding of love and relationships. In the book, I Am a Follower, written by Leonard Sweet, he talks about this. Kaya sabi niya, the two worst things you can do in life, first, is to refuse to love, and the second, is to refuse to be loved. Yan daw pinakamalala. Why? Because the mystery of love is at the heart of first followership. Thomas Aquinas maintained that there are only two credibilia or things that must be believed in the Christian faith. They are first, that God exists, and that the second, we are loved in Jesus Christ. Jesus himself said that who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Herbert McCabe put it like this, The whole of our faith is the belief that God loves us. I mean, there isn't anything else. Anything else we say we believe is just a way of saying that God loves us. Any proposition, any article of faith is only an expression of faith if it is a way of saying that God loves us. Jesus expects His followers to learn to live in His love. That means, first followers will be genuinely loving people. Notice, I didn't say likable, but loving. There's a difference between giddy kitty love and Jesus' love. These are not just ethereal words or empty suggestions. When John wrote, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth, he was saying, don't just talk a good game. Get out there and do what you say. Live the love that abases itself and exalts the beloved. Live the hard love that reaches out to humanity, that leeches the love out of life. And in fact, he introduces a word. This is how we should love daw po. In Italian, there's a word called sbigotito. Sbigotito. S-B-I-G-O-T-T-I-T-O. So, sbigotito. Kaya nyo ba sabihin? Ayan. Hindi sbigotita. Okay? Sbigotito. Hindi po siya matranslate in English. Because it implies being unnerved by love. It entails the shock of being amazed by one's lover to the point of being unable to act. In a world of studied indifference, first followers live in a constant state of bigotito, dumbfounded, amazed, and awestruck at the shock of Christ's love. Love always seems to be fighting a losing battle in this world, but at the last moment when all hope is gone, love works its magic and does the most amazing things. Sbigotito. We are called not just to love. We're called to be sbigotito. Ito yung pakiramdam na yung tipong pag may nangyari sa'yo, when someone does something so loving, you have no choice but to say, wow, paano nangyari yun? Ten years ago, there was a race in Spain. It was a cross-country race, and it was siyempre takbo, no? It was a very, very long distance. Now, in that race, there was a man named Abel Mutai, who is an African, Itim. And we know that the Africans dominate, dominate endurance sports. Sobrang gagaling nila. So, si Abel Mutai was leading the whole pack. When he reaches the finish line, suddenly, about 30 meters away from the finish line, he stops. Tumigil habang tumatakbo, biglang tumigil. Because 
it was in Spain, so all the, ano, all the signs were in Spanish. E dahil African siya, he did not understand Spanish. He thought he crossed the finish line. So isipin nyo, no? Kita nyo ang tao? Tumatakbo? Talo niya lahat ng tao? To Miguel, 30 meters before the finish line. And as he goes there, he stops and takes a rest. Kasi akala niya tapos na. Behind him, about 400 meters away, was Ivan Fernandez Anaya, a Spaniard, hometown, hometown, hometown talent. Nakita niya tumigil yung tao. Now, si Ivan Fernandez Anaya is a long-time endurance sport athlete. The problem is, he never seems to be able to take the top spot. Palagi lang siya top two, top three. At dahil doon, hindi po siya kinukuha ng Spanish national team to represent them in the Olympics. Sabi sa kanya, if you win gold in this competition, we will get you for the Olympics. Eh, ang sportsman, that's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to represent your country in the Olympic Games. Now, nakita niya, talo siya ni Abel Mutay, 400 meters away, pero nakita niya tumigil. Now, sabi nga po nila, no? What is the goal of sport? Ha? Huh? Siyempre, to win. Ala ka naman sumali ka para matalo. Ano ka? Per- participation award? Diba? The goal of sport is to win. However, is it to win at all costs? Is it just so that you can bring a gold medal home? Si Ivan Fernandez Anaya, sabi nga eh, in those split-second decisions, you see what the person is made of. Sees Abel Mutay, nakita niya may chance sa manalo. Most people would probably just run. Bakit? In sports, what happened to Abel Mutay, Mutay is called a fumble. Fumble. In other words, you drop the ball. Pag basketball, di ba, yun yung mga tipong tao na on the line yung buong laro, meron kang chance mag-score. Pag tira mo, nagmintis, fumble. Meron kang chance itay, sinipa mo yung bola, yung bola, imbis sa pumunta sa net, umakit, nawala, fumble. It's part of sports. People accept that certain people fumble. So what Abel Mutay did was a fumble. By all accounts, Ivan Fernandez should have run straight. Panalo na. Olympic sana ang ending niya. You know what Ivan Fernandez did? Allow me to show you. Because this picture became viral. Ayan po. Ivan Fernandez ended up pushing Abel Mutay and pointing where the finish line was. He started pushing Abel Mutay, brought him to the end, and finally, clap for the person. So yung mga tao nagtaka, ha? Ba't mo ginawa yun? Sira, ulo ka ba? Don't you know what's at stake? Don't you know that if you win, you're part of the national team? Don't you know if you win, you will be well known? Si Ivan Fernandez, walang pake. Tinulak niya. So tinanong siya, bakit mo ginawa yun? Sabi po niya, my dream is that someday we can have a kind of community life, he answered simply. But when pressed and reminded he was seconds away from winning the race himself, he told the journalist, what would then be the merit of my victory? And what would be the honor of my medal? Ang final statement niya, kung nanalo ako, na alam kong may ibang deserving, ano sabi niya? What would my mom think of that? Magiging proud ba mama ko dyan? You know, when that happened, everyone started talking about him. By the way, Ivan Fernandez never represented Spain. He never got his chance to re- represent Spain. But when you ask him, masaya ka ba? Alam nyo, nahanap niya, masaya siya. Life is strange. When we see something like that, we stop and think, Bakit? Paano yun nangyari? Ba't mo ginawa yan? Yan po ang sbigotito. 
That is the kind of love that makes you wonder, is this what it's supposed to be? You see, that's what we're called to do. We're called to display a kind of love that makes other people think, is this what it's supposed to be? Because in the end, love exists because God never meant for us to just end up being loved. He decided He wanted to make us the instruments of His love. Understanding what love is, but next, learning that we are blessings, of, or sorry, instruments of blessing. Hindi ko na po babasahin since we don't have time. But Rob Bell talks about Genesis 12. In Genesis 12, Abraham was called by God and said, I will bless you and through you, you will be a blessing to all nations. The interesting part about Genesis 12 is the understanding that Abraham was blessed not because he was special. He was blessed because God ended up wanting to use him to bless other people. That's the direction that God wants us to take. When we are loved, it makes us understand that love is better shared. And when we share love, it is a chance for us to make this world better. We are meant to be instruments of God's blessing. And when we forget that, the church ends up losing. Because the church is at its best when we are serving others. That's why I'd like to introduce a concept. There was a friend who talked, who talked to me about a concept in Spain that I like very much. Kasi tayo, we're a, Spanish spe we're, sorry, we're a Spanish colony, and there are many things that we picked up in Spain. Okay? One of the things ayaw, ayaw, ayaw na ayaw ko na pulot natin sa Spain is called siesta. Diba? Anong siesta? Yung tipong pagkataas mo kumain, hayahay muna tayo tulog. Diba? Napulot natin yan sa Spain. Kaya after lunch, usually tatlong oras walang trabaho sa Spain. Diba? So sa Pilipinas, napulot rin natin yan na pagkataos kumain, dapat humayahay. I don't particularly like it. But there's a concept in Spain called sobremesa. Okay? Sobremesa. Sobre meaning beyond. Mesa meaning... Di nyo alam? Table. Beyond the table. Now, the concept of sobremesa goes this way. Supposing I have a friend. I'll invite this friend to lunch. Okay? At lunch, kakain kami. Usually, how long is a good lunch time? Huh? One hour. So one hour, usually, nakakain ka na, marami ka nang napag-usapan. Kasi let's face it, yung ibang tao, 10 seconds lang kumain. Diba? So marami ka na napag-usapan. Now, in sobremesa, the goal is not to eat for an hour. The goal is to eat until you're finished. Now, ano yung sabihin ng finished? Finish ka na. Diba? Tapos ang usapan. Bakit? I invite you to lunch. We eat lunch. And during the course of our conversation, natuwa tayo. We talk about everything. We find itself such a good day, such a good opportunity to talk with one another. So after lunch, sasabihin ko, do you want dessert? So magde-dessert. So syempre, maglalabas ng dessert. Pagkatapos magkakumain ng dessert, magkikwentuhan na naman, blah, 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 blah. Mamaya, Isang oras na lumipas. So sabi mo, ay, gusto mo ba ng kape? Kasi nakakaantok yung dessert, no? So mamaya, bibigyan ka ng kape. Iinom ka ng kape. Tapos sasabihin, ay, gusto mo ng konting kasama para sa kape? So bibigyan ka ng biskwit. Mamaya, isang oras na naman lumipas. Sasabihin sa'yo, ay, malapit na maghapunan. Gusto mo, maghintay ka na lang na isang oras, maghahapunan na tayo. And it starts it again, maghahapunan ka, tapos after nun, anong next? Dessert. Tapos after ng dessert, syempre, may por the road, di ba? Yung huling-huling gagawin. Na, oo, oh, baka naman, gusto mo, may, may wine ako dyan, meron ako ano, para lang naman, na marilaks na tayo sa gabi. Nagsimula ka ng alas 12 ng hapon, uuwi ka alas 12 ng umaga. Para sa lunch. That's called sobremesa. Okay? Now, did you know that in the Philippines, meron din po tayong ganyan? That's called Kapampangan Hospitality. Diba? Ang Kapampangan, proud sila na simula ng tanghalian hanggang madaling araw, napapakain nila yung tao. And why do I talk about sobremesa? Because the way for us to become a blessing is to start at the table. It starts with who we, become, who we come into interaction with. 
And sometimes, ang nagiging problema natin, why we cannot love, let love become genuine, why we cannot outdo one another in, all, in honor, is because we time ourselves. Bibigyan kita ng one hour. Kung lumipas yung one hour, better luck next week. Diba? Better luck next time. This is a call to arms of me telling us, maybe the way that we're supposed to reach out to people is for us to understand a sobremesa kind of hospitality. Beyond the table, above and beyond what is expected, so that we are able to reach a person and understand them. We become a blessing by starting at the table. Sana po, in the moments that we have, we might understand, we might have to do sobremesa. Maybe our relationships have deteriorated. May mga taong hindi na tayo nakita. Why not yayain natin sa isang sobremesa? Baka yung pamilya natin, medyo nagkakaroon na tayo ng konting ma... Alam niyo po yun, magkakalayo. Baka kinakailangan natin magsobremesa. Baka yung mga ibang kaibigan natin na wala na, baka kailangan natin magsobremesa. Walang oras, ang punto lang, hospitality. Buksan natin ang puso natin sa tao. As we end, I'd like to show you a scene from a movie. Now, this movie is a cartoon, and I find that cartoons have a very strange way of sharing lessons. Because sometimes when we make it into human beings, an actual physical human being, it's hard to accept lessons like this. But in cartoons, it takes us in such a way that it becomes easy to digest. So this movie is based on cavemen, mga tao na galing sa Paleolithic era. Now, dahil cavemen sila, nakatira sila sa isang lugar na lahat po ng mga hayop ay sobrang lalaki and everything wants to kill them. Okay? So all the friends that they had, what each one of them started being killed by animals. So this person decided to save his family, he needed to hide in a cave with a big stone to protect them. And their family motto is, never not be afraid. At all times, be afraid of all things. Ang problema, one day, a cataclysm happens and the earth begins to shake, gets destroyed, and it destroys their cave. They lose their home and they have no choice but to find another home. But in the midst of their finding, they meet a guy called Guy, diba? who has strange ideas, who wants to go to a place called tomorrow where all the stars and all the suns live and where there is hope. And strangely, this place called tomorrow is at a mountain. Now, the father, si Grug, sabi niya, ayaw niya. He wants his family to go back to a cave. At ang pakiramdam niya, si Guy is trying to destroy his family. Is trying to show how stupid he was and how smart Guy was and how hopeless he was and how hopeful Guy was. So in the midst of all of it, they were trying to fight each other until finally, nahanap sila ng cave. Sabi po ni, Ga, ni Grug, dito tayo titira. Problema, yung buong pamilya niya ayaw na tumira sa cave kasi nakita na nila yung buong mundo. So sabi nila, but the cave is where we remain alive. Ang sagot ng anak niya, we're not alive. We're simply not dead. Yun ang problema ng tao minsan, no? We're not alive. We're simply not dead. We're just going through life. So dahil nag-mute ni yung buong pamilya niya against him, si Greg, si Grug, ended up attacking Guy and wanted to kill him. When he tried to attack Guy, they fall into a tar pit. And in this tar pit, lahat ng nalalaglag doon namamatay. Gusto ko lang po ipakita ano yung nangyari sa interaction nila. Can you please have this scene from the crudes? You know what's so interesting about that? It's the fact that they were so busy trying to survive, they forgot what's the point of surviving. It all it took was a tar pit. Kinailangan pa sila muntik mamatay para ma-realize niya, teka lang, pareho naman tayo ng gusto dito eh. But ba tayo nag We forget to tell people we love them because we're so busy. We forget to do what is right simply because we're so busy. You know, that's the reason why we must carve out time. Paul tells us to be deliberate. 
deliberate. Let love be genuine. Love one another. Outdo one another in showing honor. We must be deliberate because we're always too busy. And when we're too busy, we will never understand how to take care of the relationships we have. Don't forget, Genesis 2 said, God said, it is not good for man to be alone. Out of everything that God did, everything was good. Only one thing was not good, for man to be alone. What's the solution? Learn how to love and learn how to be a blessing. Tayo po lahat tayo as we end in prayer. I'd just like to remind everyone, this coming week, on October 29, we will be gathering at Bread of Life Intramuros at the Manila Bulletin. It's going to still be 7.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. because we're going to make way for the Kalis Games, which is a, a chance for us to host over 20 countries and show them what Filipino hospitality can be. Sana po, if we have the time, we might be able to attend, we might be able to support and cheer for everyone. But in the meantime, I'll see you on uh, October 29 at the Manila Bulletin. Let's end in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for an opportunity for us to come together, O Lord God. For we know, O Lord God, it is no accident that you brought us here at this time. Father, as we learn together, continue to teach us, O Lord God, that what we hear might become what we live. For Father, we know that sometimes in our busy times, we forget what it means to love. We forget that you said it is not good for us to be alone. So Father, O oh Lord God, teach us how to be not alone. Teach us how to be with one another. Open up our hearts, Father, to the things that you have. Sometimes, O oh Lord God, we're too busy. Sometimes we don't want to be inconvenienced. Sometimes we feel it is such a trouble to maintain relationships. But Father, we know that you made us to be in relationship. Continue to teach us, O Lord God. Help us, O Lord God, to move past our own weaknesses, to move past our own busyness. To see not the world not in the way that we see, but in the way that God sees. In the way that Jesus Christ sees. So we might understand what bigotito is. Thank you, Lord God. Continue to be with us as we learn how to be a blessing to this world. For Father, we know that you did not make us simply so that we might be happy for ourselves. That, but that part of your good moves is to teach us to do good moves for other people. We thank you, O Lord God. And as we go our separate ways, we lift up to you each and every one. As we go back to our work, our schools, our businesses, and our every concern, Father, just use us, our gifts, our talents, our time, our strength for your work and for your kingdom. In the time that we have with one another, the people we love and the people that you bring to in our midst, Father, teach us what it means to be a blessing. Cover us with your grace and your love that we might be able to share this grace and love to people. And as we give our tithes and offerings, we give them with thankful hearts. Thanking you for the opportunity to support your work and to support your kingdom. Thank you, O Lord God. And we just want to give back all glory, honor, and praise. In your sweet and mighty name we pray, one God forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless each and every one, and God go with each and every one.